Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Steve Meredith, and I'm the Business Finance Manager for the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission. I'd like to welcome you to Removing Barriers to Borrowing, How to Streamline Access to Financing for Small Business Startups. This presentation is meant to be a primer to get small businesses and specifically startups, which are those businesses that have either been in the pre-venture stage or are possibly in business for three years or less, ready to borrow from SPC and other economic development lenders. I've noticed in my daily conversations with pre-venture and startup businesses that most of those businesses run across one or multiple of these barriers that prevent them from borrowing from SPC. While this presentation is geared towards helping businesses to borrow from economic development lenders, much of the information applies to businesses borrowing from traditional banks as well. Before I get into the meat of the presentation, however, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what SPC is as an organization. SPC is a regional planning agency serving 10 counties of Southwestern Pennsylvania. We're a metropolitan planning organization. We're a local development district, and we are also a core funded partner and fiscal agent for uh, the Partnership for Regional Economic Performance, the PREP program in Southwestern Pennsylvania. Now, all of those acronyms might not mean a whole lot to a lot of people, but from an economic development pr perspective, and specifically from a lending perspective, SPC is here to help Southwestern Pennsylvania region's economy grow and prosper. And recently, we've been helping businesses to recover from COVID-19. So today's agenda is fairly straightforward. We're gonna discuss common barriers to the lender borrower relationship, how to remove those barriers and next steps that your business or startup can take to get ready to borrow from economic development lenders. And then we'll have a little bit of time left over for Q&A. And once again, I do wanna remind you that while this presentation is geared towards businesses that want to take loans from SPC and economic development lenders, much of this information also applies if you're a small business owner that wants to take a loan from a traditional bank as well. So common barriers to lending. First of all, before I get into this slide, I do want to say that I have a separate slide on each of these barriers, and we'll go into a little further depth in, in each of those slides. But the list on this screen are common barriers that most borrowers faced when, when seeking business financing, specifically from SPC. So borrower credit, I think, is the, the, the first one that people think of off the top of their head. Um, they, they know that they have to have a, a solid credit score to get a personal loan. They, they know they have to have a solid credit score to get a business loan. So that's obviously at the forefront of their mind. But another one is lack of clear business plan and or financial projections. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about you know, the, the, the assets in the region, the, um, the, the organizations in the region that can help you craft a clear business plan and help with those financial projections. But that's another big hurdle that a lot of business businesses that, that I run into uh, have to overcome. Then we're going to talk about equity injection, what it means, why it's important, and, and why lack of equity injection is often a barrier. We'll talk about what being short on collateral is, what, what the definition of being short on collateral is, and how to overcome that barrier. And then we'll talk about job retention and creation metrics, why they're important specifically to economic development lenders and how you can meet those metrics. And then this last one was a one that, that I almost didn't include in this presentation because cash flow to service debt is such a hyper uh, banker or underwriter term, if you will, that I, I didn't want to get to get too bogged down in the weeds of, of the math behind cash flow to service debt and all that stuff. But I do want to give businesses on this presentation today, businesses in attendance today, a 30,000 foot view of what cash flow to service debt means. And how you can overcome that barrier and why that might be somewhat of a silent barrier, uh, quote unquote, to a lot of businesses that are seeking debt from economic development lenders and traditional banks. So let's jump right into it. Borrower credit, like I said at the beginning, I think this is the barrier that, that most people think about when they can't get a loan. They, they think, oh, well, my, my, credit, my credit score is too low. I'm not going to get approved. <clears throat> so first off the bat, you need to make sure that you know your credit score. That, that almost goes without saying, right? 
Um, but in addition to that, you need to remove negative items or provide documentation to mitigate effects. Anybody that's tried to remove negative items off of their credit score knows just how difficult that can be. So one of the other ways that you can mitigate those effects is providing documentation proving that you have paid off certain debts that might still show up on your credit report. I had a, a borrower not too long ago have a credit report that had some, some debts that were still showing up on the credit report that he had taken care of. So what we had asked him to do is we said, well, if you can just get us the satisfaction notices from some of those debts, um, we can, uh, we can send that over to our loan review committee and as, as sort of mitigating documentation uh, and to try to get that loan past our committee. The third bullet here, I included charge-offs because I think a lot of business owners might not understand exactly what they are. I actually had a business owner not too long ago come to me at, with, with a clear misunderstanding of what a charge-off was. Charge-offs are declarations by a creditor that an amount of debt is unlikely to be collected. And the reason why they can be a little bit confusing on the credit report is sometimes they can show up as zero balances on a credit report. I actually had this happen to a borrower not too long ago that, that we ended up not being able to lend to because of the number of charge-offs he had. And he came to us and he said, but, but they're all showing as zero balances. If a, if a charge off on your credit report shows as a zero balance, that does not mean that the loan or financing that you took is paid off. Rather, it means that any amount left unpaid is unlikely to be recouped by the lender and the lender has essentially just accepted that. Charge-offs occur after a borrower has defaulted on a loan for a certain amount of time. They're, they're very negative, they're very bad, so you want to avoid having charge-offs on your credit report at all costs. Okay, and then finally, again, I think this goes without saying, you want to monitor the number of credit history inquiries you have on your credit report because it does hit your credit report to some, to some respect. Obviously, credit history inquiries aren't going to be as bad as having charge-offs on your credit report, but it will say, something to the effect of you know, too many credit history inquiries in the last 12 months. Lack of clear business plan or projections. This is a big one that I see quite often. Business owners will come to me and the conversation will go something like this. They'll say, I have a great new idea for, for a new business or a new restaurant. And the first thing I'll say is like, great, that's awesome. Do you have a business plan? And they might look at me, they say, well, I've been working on a business plan, you know, I'm, I'm a couple pages into it, but I, I, I need to tighten it up a little bit. And the next question out of my mouth is, well, have you contacted a small business development center, an SBA small business development center to help you craft your business plan? And that's usually when the conversation changes and they say, well, well, no, I really haven't. Uh, and the first thing that I tell my business borrowers to do is to seek out, if you don't already have a business plan and projections in place, seek out a small business development center to help you craft your business plan. It's important to understand, excuse me, that, that you, you have to have more than an executive summary as part of your business plan, okay? A properly developed business plan can be more than 20 pages in length, and it should have at least the following sections that I have on the screen. I, I put four here, but in my notes here, I actually have it broken down into eight sections. Uh, an executive summary, a company description, uh, a description of your products or services with a focus on how your customer is going to benefit, a market analysis featuring your targeted customers, uh, any competition in your area, uh, companies that provide essentially the same services that you provide that you're gonna be competing with, and a market outlook. Uh, the next one, marketing strategy and implementation. Uh, an outline of the organizational structure. Who are the key players? Who's the CEO? Who's the chief financial officer? Who's the chief marketing officer? A financial plan and projections. Uh, for how much in revenue you plan to, uh, revenue, excuse me, that you plan to make in your first three years of existence. And then finally, that funding request is also going to be put in there. And that funding request can be twofold. That can be for financing, or if you're seeking financing from a venture capital firm, that would be where that financial request goes, is, goes in as well. I cannot underscore this next point 
uh, enough. Make sure that you use a small business development center when you are crafting your, your, your business plan and projections. This is crucial because SPC and other economic development lenders will want to see that your business plan has been reviewed by a small business development center before you take a loan with those organizations. Furthermore, if your business plan has been reviewed by an SBDC, it should say so on the cover of the business plan. It will say something like reviewed and edited by the IUP Small Business Development Center or reviewed and edited by the Duquesne University Small Business Development Center. Uh, I can certainly help you connect with small business development centers in the area. We have uh, quite a bit of them in the Southwestern Pennsylvania area. We have the University of Pittsburgh Small Business Development Center. We have the Duquesne University Small Business Development Center. We have a small business development center at St. Vincent College, uh, one at IUP, and then one you might not think of, but one that serves sort of the northern edge of the Southwestern Pennsylvania region is the Clarion University Small Business Development Center. I can help you connect to any one of those small business development centers. And quite honestly, we actually get credits. SPC actually gets credit for referring uh, businesses to small business development centers to start the business plan and projection process. Lack of equity injection. This one, this one is, is kind of interesting. Um, equity injection just means that the borrower has some skin in the game. You're risking some of your own capital to make this dream of your the, the dream of yours come true. Okay, most lenders ask for 10 to 20 percent equity to be infused in the loan deal. If you take a look at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see an overview of SPC's loan structure. We commonly ask for the borrower to bring 10% equity to the deal, and then the remaining 90% of the, the, the total cost of the project is split evenly between SPC and a private bank. Now, equity can take a few different forms. Okay, Obviously, it can be a cash injection from the owners, um, but it can also count, it, it can also be counted towards your equity injection if you provide us with invoices, paid invoices or receipts from previous purchases that are part of the project. So if you make a down payment on a building that you're seeking financing from SPC from, uh, if you have proof of that down payment, send us that documentation. Similarly, if you're going through a renovation project that we also help finance, if you keep receipts on some of the supplies that you purchase, to, uh, to make this, this project a reality, keep those receipts and turn them in to SPC as proof of equity injection towards the project. The next one is, is a common uh, problem that we face uh, here at SPC. It's actually one of the most common problems that we see is that the borrower is what is known as short on collateral. All that really means is if the loan goes bad, the bank would not fully recover the value of the loan proceeds from the sale of the assets offered as collateral to secure a loan, okay? Now, borrowers can overcome this challenge, and we'll, just, we'll talk about that more later, but one of the two ways that borrowers can overcome this challenge is offering additional equity injection, okay, to, to cover any collateral shortfall. Now, we'll talk about the other way that you can overcome the uh, collateral shortfall in a minute here. Moving along, okay, so job retention and creation requirements. Every economic de development lender is going to have certain job retention or creation metrics. And, and that metric, that rule is gonna read something like, uh, you must retain or create one job for every X amount of dollars borrowed. So for SPC's purposes, our borrowers must retain one job for every $35,000 borrowed or create one job for every $50,000 borrowed. And either instance of that requirement must be fulfilled by the end of the first three years of the loan's term. So it doesn't matter if you have a 15 year term with SPC on a building loan, let's say. You have to, to create or retain the jobs that you state that you're going to create or retain by the end of the first three years of the loan's term. Now, if you cannot create or retain those jobs by the specified period of time, you could fail to qualify to borrow the amount of money that you need from an economic development lender. I will sometimes have borrowers come to us that say, I wanna borrow $300,000 from SPC, and they will turn in their job retention or creation form, and we'll take a look at it and we'll say, hey, listen, you don't actually have the jobs necessary to 
fulfill this $300,000 loan. You, you can only support a $150,000 loan with the number of jobs that you say that you're going to retain or create. So keep that in mind. That, that's going to affect how much money you can borrow if you don't have the jobs that, that you can create or retain uh, by a specific uh, endpoint. And then finally, uh, you want to be conservative in your estimates for job retention and creation. If you tell an economic development lender that you're going to create a lot of jobs and then fall short of that projection, oftentimes there are state and federal regulations that require an increase in the interest rate on that particular loan. And quite honestly, that defeats the whole purpose of taking an, a loan with an economic development lender. I can tell you right now, let's say for the sake of argument, you're a small business owner and you want to take a building loan with SPC. Right now, you could qualify for an interest rate as low as 1% on that building loan and have that 1% interest rate locked in for the life of the loan. Let's say it's a max 15-year loan. You're paying 1% on that loan for the next 15 years. And the only way that that interest rate would increase is if you fail to meet the job retention or creation requirement. So just be cognizant of that whenever you take a loan with an economic development lender. Lack of cash flow to service debt. This is the one that, um, that I debated not including because it's so hyper-focused on bankers and, and uh, and underwriters specifically, but I did want to try to give you a, a 30,000 foot view of what cash flow to service debt is. The common banking term is that you have to have the debt service coverage ratio to, be, to meet your existing debt in order to take a, a new loan. Debt service coverage ratio is just a, bill, a, a business's ability to meet its current debt obligations. And it's commonly uh, abbreviated DSCR. Now, DSCR is calculated by taking your net operating income and dividing it by debt service. Debt operating income is typically found on your company's cash flow statement. Now, a cash flow statement is one of three financial documents that you as the business owner will be required to maintain uh, every so often. And, and sometimes people, sometimes business owners will maintain those documents on a monthly basis. Sometimes they will maintain those documents on a quarterly basis. But you can find net operating in, income on your cash flow statement. Now, debt service is the total cash required by a company to pay back its debt obligations. This one's going to be a little bit harder to, to, to calculate, but it because what it requires you to do is basically take a look at all of your debts and add up all of uh, all of the cash that you would need to pay back all of your debt obligations. And what one thing I will tell you is when you're trying to figure out your debt service, when you're trying to figure out the total cash required by your company to pay back its debt obligations, you want to go to each individual creditor with whom you already have debt and you want to ask them for what's known as an amortization schedule so that you can find out the, 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 the principal payments and the interest payments that you are paying on from a month-to-month -month basis until that specific debt is paid off. You want to add up both the principal and the interest payments and combine them when you're trying to calculate your total debt service. Now, when you finally do the, the equation, this DSCR equation, it is typically expressed as a decimal. So if you take the example on the screen, Joe Schmo's ice cream shop has a net operating income of $560,000 per year and a debt service of $340,000 per year. His debt service coverage ratio, therefore, would be 1.64. The point that I want you to take from this bullet, this third bullet, is that a DSCR of less than one means that your business has negative cash flow or not enough cash flowing into the business to meet your existing debt. Let me say that again. A DSCR of less than one, so 0.88 or 0.76 or 0.54, means that your business has negative cash flow or not enough cash flowing into the business to meet your existing debt. And essentially what a bank is going to do or what an economic development lender is going to do is they're going to take a look at that and say, wait a minute, these guys can't meet, this business can't meet their existing debt. How are they going to be able to meet the new debt that we're going to give them? That is why I included this slide. 
so that you can have a, a, a pretty good handle on what debt service coverage ratio is and how to calculate it before you approach a bank or an economic development lender to take a small business loan. Moving right along, removing these barriers to borrowing. Okay, a few of these right off the top of your head are, are going to be pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, you want to consider your creditworthiness. Okay, you might have to pay off some debt. Uh, you might have to remove some negative items from your uh, your credit report to increase uh, your your credit score. You want to ensure that your business has an updated business plan and projections. And if it if it hasn't been updated, or if you are a new business that is is trying to craft your business plan off the top of your head, um, uh, you know you don't have to go it alone. Okay, seek a small business development center's assistance. Seek their counsel when uh, crafting a business plan and projections. Um, to my knowledge, and any of the small business development uh, specialists on the line today can feel free to connect, correct me in the chat, but to my knowledge, much, if not all, of small business development center services are free. Now, one caveat, you will have to pay fees to the state to, uh, to, to uh, um, get registered to do business in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, so those have some fees uh, associated with it. But from a counseling perspective, the SBDC's uh, counsel is largely free, okay? If not 100% free. And again, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong to, to any of the uh, Small Business Development Center specialists on, on the line here today. The fourth bullet, determine the value of the item that you're financing from a collateral perspective. And, and again, you don't have to do this alone either, okay? So for instance, if you're purchasing land or a building, I, I showed you in a few slides ago, the common structure for an SPC loan, right? So the common structure is the borrower brings 10%, SPC finances 45%, and then the private bank fi finances the other 45%, okay? If you take an SPC loan and let's say you're, you're purchasing land or a building, Chances are the bank that is providing the matching financing is going to order an appraisal on that building, okay? Likewise, if you're purchasing equipment and the equipment is old enough, maybe, let's say it's used equipment and it's from maybe 10 years ago, the bank might also ask for an appraisal on the equipment as well, okay? And that's gonna help you and help the bank and the economic development lender understand where they stand from a collateral perspective of, of um, uh, you know, just what the collateral picture looks like, whether or not you're short on collateral or whether we have the collateral necessary to fully secure the loan. Now, if you do find yourself short on collateral, I mentioned one way that you can uh, remedy the problem is injecting additional equity into the deal, so additional cash from the borrower. Or you can take a look at um, you know, your personal assets as well. You could place your, your home up as collateral to, to finance the loan or another asset that you might have that might be worth a lot of money to, to fully finance the, 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 the project. The other item that you might run into from a, an economic development lender's perspective or a, a banker's perspective is in addition to the asset being financed, being offered as collateral, a lot of economic development lenders and banks will also ask you for personal guarantees from certain owners. From SPC's perspective, we ask for a personal guarantee from any owner that has 20% or larger stake in the business when, when, uh, when securing the loan. Um, and basically what that means is this allows the bank or the economic development lender to pursue, to pursue your personal assets after business assets offered as collateral are sold. And once again, that's only in the event that the loan defaults, okay? The, the, you, that, that you stop making payments or something like that, okay? Fifth bullet here, how will the project help you create or retain jobs? Once again, I can't underscore this point enough. Please, please, please be conservative about your job creation or retention goals, okay? You, I always say to my borrowers that you want to uh, project that you're going to retain or create less jobs than you actually think you're going to create or retain. You always want to under-promise and then over-deliver when you are uh, thinking about uh, job creation or retention met metrics so that you don't have to risk uh, an interest rate increase, okay? 
And then finally, um, does your business bring in enough revenue to service your debt? If you aren't sure, review your company financial statements. Um, specifically, uh, that uh, net operating income is going to be found on your cash flow statement. Uh, and before I go much further, I do want to say that I have a separate presentation um, that, that I'd be happy to give to anybody that's interested that overviews the three main financial documents that you will need to, to maintain as a business owner. Uh, so if you're confused about what a cash flow statement looks like or what a, a profit and loss statement looks like or what a balance sheet looks like, uh, I know that I have that presentation in my arsenal. Um, the small business development centers routinely do presentations on the three main uh, financial documents that you will need to maintain as a business owner. So seek them out as, as guidance for helping you craft those financial, uh, financial documents. Again, you don't have to go it alone, but if you're looking specifically to find out if you have enough revenue to service your debt, that net operating income can be found on your cash flow statement. Um, and then, uh, you know, the debt service is just going to have to come from you adding up all of the debt that you currently have, and then doing that division uh, equation to get that debt service coverage ratio. Okay, so moving forward, next steps. Y you have to admit that sometimes it might not yet be time to talk to a lender, okay? You might have to seek out an SBDC to work on your business plan. You might have to update your financials. You might have to get financial projections. Maybe you do have the business plan, but you don't have the, the, the financial projections, okay? But the second bullet point is, is incredibly important. When you are approaching lenders, whether they be economic development lenders or business banks, have your business paperwork in hand. This means having a copy of your business plan and three years worth of financial projections if you're a startup, having three years worth of business tax returns, three years worth of business financials, copies of formation documents, personal tax returns for anyone guaranteeing the loan, all of that kind of stuff. Now, all business lenders will want to have these documents when determining whether or not to give your business a loan. Now, with regard to the business taxes and financials, while business owners can certainly use software like QuickBooks and FreshBooks and Excel to draw up these financial documents, I would suggest that as soon as your business is able, as soon as your business can support it, support the expense, you retain the services of a CPA to handle drafting your business's financials. Business lenders, whether they be government lenders like economic development organizations or private banks, will always prefer accountant prepared financial statements. That said, I have a major caveat here. As I mentioned previously, please don't rely on, I, I think I mentioned previously, I might not have. If I haven't mentioned it previously, don't rely on your CPA to tell you if your business is profitable. I cannot tell you the number of times I will be on a phone, phone call with a business and I'll be like, well, what, what's your profits look like? Well, how much, did, how much money did you make last year or the year before? And it's like, you know what? I can get that information from my accountant. And it's like, it's good that your accountant can give you that information at the drop of a hat, but you should probably know what that is when asked, okay? So don't rely on your CPA to tell you if your business is profitable. Uh, you have to review your business's financials month to month. And if you haven't started doing that, if you have a CPA doing your business financials, just ask to meet with them. You know, meet with them maybe on a quarterly basis. If you, if you feel more comfortable meeting with them on a monthly basis, feel free to do so. But get a handle on where your, uh, where your business stands financially. And then finally, um, before applying for the financing, research the positive and negative impacts of the loan. Um, I can tell you, SPC is not in the business of giving you a loan just to give you a loan, okay? We don't want to saddle you with additional debt that you can't handle, okay? So before applying for financing, you know, really ask yourself, can my business bring in enough money to, uh, to, to, to service the debt to take care of this loan because we want your business to grow and thrive and prosper. And that is true regardless of which economic development lender you go to, okay? Which bank you go to. I, I mean, banks don't want 
you to default on your loans. We don't want to collect your assets and sell them off to get our money back. We want you to be successful. So please, 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 before you apply for financing, research the positive and negative impact of the loan. And then, uh, and, and if, it, if, it does sound, if it does look like your business can, uh, can handle the additional debt at that point, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about your project and uh, we, we'd love to go from there. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my presentation today. Um, I've, re I've recorded this presentation. So if you are watching this presentation on demand, here is my contact information. Um, right now, uh, it is uh, June, uh, no, excuse me, May 17th. I'm getting, a, get, getting ahead of myself. It's May 17th, 2021. Um, and uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic, although it is coming to an end. Um, and I am in the office two days a week, uh, usually Monday and Tuesday, so you can reach me on that office line extension. Um, but probably the best way to get a hold of me is via email, smerit at spcregion.org. And then you can also feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I love meeting new business owners uh, on that social media, and I, I love facilitating conversation that way. So uh, with, without anything further, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, I'd love to uh, uh, I'd love to entertain some questions. And if you don't have any questions, if you want to uh, ask me questions offline, you can feel free to do uh, you can feel free to do so as well. And thank you very much again for coming. <laughs>